Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu La syarika lahu fi rububiyyatihi wa uluhiyyatihi wa asma'ihi wa sifatihi wa asyhadu anna Muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu shalawatullahi wa salamuhu 'alaihi wa 'ala azwajihi ya tahirat ummahatul mu'minin wa 'ala khulafa'ir rasyidin wa 'ala ashabihi ajma'in wa 'ala kulli man ittaba'ahum bi ihsan ila yaumiddin qala Allah 'azza wa jall fil qur'anil karim أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار أما بعد All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him, we thank Him, we glorify Him We seek His help and aid and we ask Allah to forgive us We ask Allah to protect us We ask Allah to keep us rightly guided We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our own selves And from the sins that we commit Indeed whoever Allah guides There is none who can lead astray and whoever he causes to go astray, there is none who can guide. I testify that there is none deserves to be worshipped except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. Verily, the best of speech is the book of Allah. The best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated. And every religious innovation is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah is a misguidance, and every misguidance will be in the fire of hell. May Allah protect all of us from the fire of hell. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Ibadullah, Ayyuhal Muslimun, Alhamdulillah, we are in the season of Hajj. Alhamdulillah, we are in the month of Dhul Qa'dah, almost approaching the end of Dhul Qa'dah. And then we will enter into the blessed month of Dhul Hijjah. When the moon is sighted, then we will enter this blessed month of Dhul Hijjah, bi'idhnillah. So inshallah, we are approaching the best 10 days of the year. The first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. These are days that are special in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are so important that Allah azza wa jal swears an oath by them in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والفجر والليل العشر that by the dawn and by the ten nights referring to the ten days of Dhul Hijjah that will soon be upon us بإذن الله once the moon is sighted and we enter the new moon the next month Dhul Hijjah the first ten days blessed days so Allah subhanahu wa taala swears an oath by them. And swearing an oath by something is an indication of how much it is important and it has tremendous benefit. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah and others of earlier and later generations, they said that this refers to the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. In fact, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Afdalu ayyamid dunya ayyamul ashur. That the best days of the year are the days of the ten. The first ten days of Dhul Hijjah. And here is a lesson for us, my brothers and sisters. 
Here is a lesson for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses whatever days he wishes, whatever time he wishes, and he blesses them. He deposits in them a rahmah and bounty and blessings. And we have to capitalize on these days. And there is a wisdom behind that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, among many other things, he understands human nature well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created us. He understands human nature well and understands that humanity, those who worship him, they need seasons and they need opportunities of worship. Humanity understands that well and the business world, they understand that well. This is why they give you sale and promotion. They give you season and sale and promotion, selling you the same merchandise they had for the year. But they know they want to grab your attention. So they said it's a sale, it's a season, it's a promotion, so that they can grab your attention. So, similarly, those who worship Allah Azza wa Jal can experience some form of monotony, some form of boredom, some form of monotony in their worship. They pray every day, we make dua every day, we fast every week, but then after that, after some time, this can present some form of a monotony, a burden. You may think this is a burden and it can become monotonous for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands that variety is important for human nature. As people in the business world, they understand variety is important to capture your attention. So Allah Azza wa Jal, who understands us best because He created us. He created us. He presents us with these seasons. Like we just finished a season of Ramadan. And here is another blessed season upon us. Another season of the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Here is a season where you can refocus. You can refocus and regain your enthusiasm. And you can ascend in your worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you have reached a certain level of your iman, come these seasons, come Ramadan, come the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, and, and any other day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses and deposits blessings, Come this season, you can ascend and increase your iman and elevate in your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that, and all who had lapses between these seasons, who had lapses between these seasons and had committed injustice against themselves and against others by committing sins, by, by, by trespassing the limits of Allah, by committing zulm, oppression against themselves and against others. This season comes as a reminder. This season comes as a reminder to them to again, again like the past season of Ramadan. To remind you again that the door of Allah is open. To remind you again that the rahmah of Allah is there. To remind you again that come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the door of mercy and rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is open. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attracts you again and brings your attention to him again. And tells you how you can come back to him. So this is a season, O oh Muslims. This is a season if you had lapses between Ramadan and this season. This is a season to get you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you had com committed sins, this is a season for you to come back and make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that these are the best days of the year. In, an, in another na hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ الْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحِ فِيهَا أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَيَّامِ there are no days in which righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah than these days. The days of the ten. The ten days of Dhul Hijjah. In another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أَعْذَمُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَيَّامِ الْعَشُرِ That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, 
that there are no greater days more beloved to Allah than these days, the days of the ten, the ten days of the Hijjah. That is anything you do in them, any good deeds you do in them, it is better than out of Dhul Hijjah. Your salah in them is better than salah outside of them. The obligatory and the voluntary, your fasting in them is better than voluntary fasting outside of them. We know that the obligatory fasting in, in Ramadan is better, but the fasting in the ten days, ten days of Dhul Hijjah, the nine days, because the 10th is Eid, it's prohibited for you to fast on Eid day. So the fasting on the nine days of, of, of Dhul Hijjah, it is better than fasting voluntary fast outside of them. Your dhikr in them is better than your dhikr outside of them. Your sadaqa in them is better than your sadaqa outside of them. And the companions, radiallahu anhum, they were eager to learn. They were curious. They asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They said, "Walal jihad fi sabilillah," because they know that jihad, dhur atu sunami al Islam, it is the peak of Islam. So they questioned. They asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that they can learn. They said, "O Messenger of Allah, that these ten days, good deeds in them even are better than jihad fi sabilillah." And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Well, he, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, 'Well, al jihadu fi sabilillah illa rajulan kharaja bi nafsihi wa malihi thumma lam yarjeh min thalika bi shay.' That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that it would be better than jihad for the sake of Allah, except if a man goes out for jihad." And he does not return, meaning that he is martyred for the sake of Allah. He does not return. He loses both his life and his wealth, meaning that a person who, who goes out for jihad and returns safe and sound, safe and sound in body and in wealth, he could not have performed any better than if he had worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ten days of Dhul Hijjah. So each and every one of us, we need to capitalize. We need to be informed, first of all, about it. We need to be informed, and then we need to capitalize on it. We need to be motivated about it and prepare for it. The ten days that will soon be upon us, bi'ithnillah. And you may ask yourself, you may ask yourself, why? What is so special of these ten days? What is so important about them? So some of the ulama, they give us some wisdom behind that. And they said, one of the reasons is that the good deeds are united in these days. Combination of good deeds in these days. You have hajj, you have umrah, you have fasting, you have dhikr, you have dhabiha, animal sacrifice. So many good deeds in these ten days of Dhul Hijjah. Combination of good deeds that you don't find at any other days of the year. So, O Muslims, they said to compare, they said that the days of Dhul Hijjah are even better than the days of Ramadan. The days of Dhul Hijjah, the ten days of Dhul Hijjah, even better than the days of Ramadan. Of course, the nights of Ramadan, better than the, the nights of Dhul Hijjah. Because we know we have. Laylatul Qadr, in the last, the last, in the, in the last ten nights, we know that. And here is another lesson for us. Here is another lesson for us, O Muslims. Consider how much energy we put into Ramadan. Consider how much preparation we made before Ramadan. How much motivation we motivate each other. How much messages we send to family and friends, reminding them about Ramadan coming. How many reminders we sent? How many planning we did for Ramadan? Yet the Prophet says that these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are better than the days of Ramadan. So the question is, why do we perform less in these days? That's the question for each and every one of us. 
why do we perform less in these days? It could be because we are not informed about it. We are not knowledgeable about it. We are not motivated about it. Why do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala less in these, during these days? And you will see, bi'ithnillah, that in Ramadan, everyone around you is worshiping Allah. So it is social. It is more social. You see each other doing it, it reminds you, you're doing it. So we are programmed that way. We are programmed from small in our family that you, you spend, you, you, you exhort yourself in Ramadan. But then there is another lesson for us here. One more lesson we can take away from this is that you know the commands of Allah. You know the commands of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you know the price of it. So you do it regardless if others are doing it or not. Because you know the price. You know the result. You know the importance of it. So not because others are not doing it then. It should discourage you from doing it. To be motivated about it. So the lesson we take away is that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You emphasize on your worship and you emphasize on doing good deeds regardless if others are doing it or not. So, O oh Muslims, the best of days are upon us, bi'ithnillah. So what can we do during these days? What is so special about them? One of the things that is special about these days, the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, is the day of Arafah, the ninth day of Dhul Hijjah. Very special day. One of the things it is so significantly loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The day of Arafah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْ يَوْمٍ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ أَنْ يُعْتِقَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ أَبْدًا مِنَ النَّارِ مِنْ يَوْمِ Arafah. That there is no other day where Allah azza wa jal frees more people from the hell fire than the day of Arafah. Subhanallah. There is no other day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free, emancipated people from the hellfire than the day of Arafah. And the hadith continues. And Allah Azza wa Jal comes close to the people in Arafah in a way that fits his majesty. When they are standing in Arafah, the hujaj. And he boasts about them before the angels. And he said, For Yaqul, ma arada ha'ula. He said, What are they seeking from me? He boasts to the angels. Of course, Allah Azza wa Jal, He knows what they are seeking. He boasts to the angels, ma arada ha'ula. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, Ishhadu malaikati anni qad ghafartu lahum. That be witnesses, my angels. That I have forgiven them. In another hadith, he said, They came to me dusty and disheveled. And Allah Azza wa Jal loves this surrender and submission. That they came to him and they left the entire dunya behind them. They are asking Allah Azza wa Jal for one thing Ya Allah, forgive us and save us from the hellfire and accept this hajj from us. And Allah Azza wa Jal loves that. And because of that, he forgives them. He frees them from the hellfire. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Hajj al-Mabrur, Laysa lahu jaza illa al-Jannah. That the Hajj, that is Mabrur. The Hajj, that is upon righteousness. There is no other reward except Jannah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah ali wa lakum fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-Ghafur rahim Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala O Muslims on the day of Arafah by the way if you didn't know already the day of Arafah or the spot of Arafah when you journey all the way to Arafah 
to the spot, you're actually renewing your covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first spot that you had before you had a physical body, and before you came to this world, fi alam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extracted all of humanity from the back of Adam alayhi salam and asked them, Allah rabbikum? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked everyone, Am I not your Lord? And everyone said, all of us included, Kalu bala shahidna. We said, certainly, Ya Allah, we, we bear witness, we testify that you are our Rabb. The brothers, please come up closer, come up closer, make room for those coming late. Jazakumullah khair. In the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said that he spread them all in the plain of Arafah. So that's the fourth spot on this earth that you witness. So when Allah azza wa jal is telling us that you are coming back to it, you are coming back to the same exact spot, telling Allah azza wa jal, labbaik Allahumma labbaik, that Ya Allah, I'm here, Ya Allah, responding to your command and renewing my covenant with you, Ya Rabbul Alameen. So, O Muslims, one of the first things that we should be doing during these 10 days, these blessed days, is that Tawbah, repentance. Capitalize on the blessed time that you make Tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, repentance is to come back to Allah. Because sins block your way to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we want to take advantage and seek forgiveness for all of our sins. Also we should know that in a virtuous place and virtuous times, sins committed during these blessed times are multiplied as well. So we should know that sins are multiplied. So you want to be careful not to commit sins during these blessed days during this blessed time. So this is why we have to make dua to Allah to protect us from committing sins. Also, we should have a plan. The same way, I, as I mentioned, we had a plan before Ramadan starts. We should have a plan in place when these 10 days approach, what we should do. What we should do, we should receive these blessed days with determination and a plan. So among the first things is to increase our dhikr of Allah. Increase our dhikr of Allah in these blessed days. The Prophet wasallam said in a hadith, Say often in them, Takbir, Allahu Akbar, Tahleel, La ilaha illallah, and Tahmeed, Alhamdulillah. So this is a general dhikr of Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Wallahu Akbar, Wallillahi alhamd. So this is a forgotten sunnah. We need to revive this sunnah. It is said that Abdullah ibn Umar and Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhuma, they used to go to the marketplaces and they used to say the dhikr loudly and everyone will be following them. The second thing is your regular ibadah. Your regular ibadah, your salah, your regular ibadah, you should continue with that. Next is fasting the nine days of Dhul Hijjah. If you have the time, fast the nine days of Dhul Hijjah. Fasting in them is better than any other voluntary fast outside of them. So it is better to fast in nine days, not the tenth. The tenth is the day of Eid. And of course, fasting Yawmul Arafah. Fasting on the ninth, the day of Arafah itself. If everything else fails, at least you fast on the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, the day of Arafah. The Prophet wasallam said, Sawmu yawmi Arafah, yukaffiru sana wa ma qablaha. That fasting on the day of Arafah, the reward for it, two years. The past and the coming. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sins. And next we need to make dua on the day of Arafah. Increase in your dua on the day of Arafah. Especially make dua during these times for our brothers and sisters being oppressed all over the world. Make dua for them during these times. The ten days of Dhul Hijjah, especially on Yomul Arafah. Make dua for brothers and sisters in Palestine. Make dua for brothers and sisters in Sudan and all of the globe who are suffering and being oppressed. So you make dua. The Prophet wasallam said, Khayru dua, dua yawmi arafah. That the best dua is the dua on the day of arafah. So you could see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful to us that even if you are not making the hajj, 
that you are, you, you are, out, you are away, you're, you're, you're staying back. This is an opportunity for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our dua, will forgive our sins. So we continue with that. And then, charity. Give charity, it is said. Some people said that it's better you give charity every day. Also, recitation of Quran every day. And then, the biha. Animal sacrifice. One of the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam is the slaughtering of an animal. It is a conformed sunnah. And some of the scholars, the ulama, some of them said it is an obligation. But it is sunnah mu'akkada. It is a strong sunnah. The Prophet wasallam said, Man kana lahu sa'ah wa lam yudahi fala yaqrabanna musallana. That the one who can afford it, but he does not sacrifice, let him not come to our musalla for prayer. So, O Muslims, here the Prophet is emphasizing that if you can afford it, this is something that Allah Azza wa Jal loves. So we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us so that we can prepare for the 10 days of the hijjah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to be form Muslims. Help us to be form upon the deen. To protect us and to protect our family from shaitan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help our Muslim brothers and sisters all over the globe who are suffering. Help our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Help our brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Sudan, all over the globe that are suffering. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا ذاب النار اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونسألك الخير ما سألك عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من الشر ما استعاذك منه عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك يا حي يا قيوم وبرحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تقلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وقيم الصلاة